Hello and welcome. My name is Jack. We're here at Anderson's TV today. And perhaps you've seen my video explaining how I play C, how I think the world should play C. And you might be even commenting and thinking, hang on, that's not how you play C. I know how to play C. And I maybe didn't explain myself. But this is why it works. So we're going to go into a little bit of theory as to why it works and also some variations on that chord. Because if you've been digging it and you found like, oh, some I find it really opens up paths to using your ears, moving away from music, and, and just feeling comfortable with sitting at the piano and just hitting it, just experimenting. So we'll just recap again very briefly. This, is, this was the shape, which was C, D, G, and an octave G, all together with a C on the bottom. That's how, and what I said as well was to experiment with different, any white note on the bottom will work. Any white note will work. Now, you may go, oh, C is this. C, E, and G. Hopefully you realise I'm not that stupid. I know that that's C. I know that's C. But come on, let's be honest, man. What's a better C? This? Or this? And that is literally will change your life. And the reason why it works for me, because I don't think too theoretically, but I've shown this to so many of my friends. I've been shown it and I've, you see it in loads of examples. Bruce Hornsby is a massive proponent of this shape. Often any modern accompaniment to pop songs, you'll find it. Anyway, let's delve in a bit more. When we've got this C and G here with these two fingers. Now, a lot of guys will think, oh, that's the fifth in there, but it's an interval of a fourth. You don't need to worry about it. And then on the top here, we've got D and G. That is also an interval of a fourth. And when you stack these together, you've got two, you've stacked two sets of fourths. May the fourths be with you. Sorry, it's terrible, but it, I know it's heavy. If you haven't ever heard it before, it's heavy. You don't need to worry about it, but it's just a little bit so you know what's behind it. Now, unlike this C major, There is stacked in thirds. And we're stacking it in fourths. And we've got a non-traditional note in there, this D. But what that allows us is it means that when we're playing this shape and we're putting in a bass note, because this doesn't have a major or a minor third in it. So C major, C minor. We've taken out that third. We're not worrying about that. And by the bass notes that are in there, or the melody that we're singing, I got such a... That is defining the quality of the chord. Anyway, hey, how boring was that? Little bit of theory for it. Let's get into some special moves you can do with that C. You ready? Okay, variations on that chord, because you're probably bored of it by now, just going. Maybe you're not bored of it, it's still pretty, it still amazes me that I can just play any white note and it sounds all right. Little variations. First of all, we're gonna, what I like to call waterfall it. So, I don't know why I think of it like that. I'm always like waterfall, waterfall, or like a, a harp. We're gonna, we're gonna rake our fingers across it. And first we're gonna go down to up. And that means instead of just putting all our hands, our fingers down at once, we're gonna go from left to right, thumb, Index finger, third finger, pinky. And then you start speeding up. So it's almost like you're pressing down at once. And see, instead of me starting a song going, 
I go like this. And that little, I start before the C, and it just softens us in. You can also go the other way around, pinky down to thumb. Find your rhythm in there, but lay it down. Lay it down. So I often like to start going up. And when I finish the song, I go down. Really simple way to do it. Now, let's just take that one little move and extrapolate it up the octave. So what's beautiful about the keyboard is it's the same little pitch, same little pitch of 12 notes, and we just play on the same pitch, stacked and stacked, left to right. So this C, if we go up and we find a higher C, point it again, exactly the same shape. And we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to start here. Maybe put an F on the bottom. And get used to moving between those two octaves. Let's do it on the way down. But starting the higher octave, we're ending the song. And that works all over. I really want you to practice going, moving the octaves of this shape. Same shape. Now, you may be thinking, what are you doing with your left hand, Jack? Sometimes you're doing octaves, sometimes, and that's what I am doing. At the moment, either play one note at a time in your left hand, and then the other way to play it is if you can, take that thumb, and all you're gonna do is find the same note an octave up. So let's start with the C. We've got a C there. We've got an E here, and just a bit, it adds robustness to the chord, uh, for want of a better word. So here it is with one note. Here it is with octaves. Here it is with single notes. Now, if we put those things together and you just feel it naturally, I just want you for this, that this is the first special move using your newfound C is again, waterfall up, waterfall down. Move it octaves. And that is your homework for this week, ladies and gentlemen.